Today, join me as I install this composite video mod in an Atari 2600. This Atari 2600 was released in 1977, making it almost 50 years old. I also here have an Atari 2600 Junior released in 1986. This one is almost 40 years old. And something both of these have in common is their RF output, which requires a TV with an analog tuner, something that modern TVs do not have. So to fix this, we can use something called a composite mod, which allows these old consoles to be easier to connect to modern TVs. To find a mod, I hopped onto eBay and found there was a plethora of options, and from what I can gather, a lot of them are quite intrusive and require removing components from the board. However, as someone who has never modded an Atari before, this one piqued my interest, as it is a clean mod without the need to remove any components. So now that it's been delivered, the first thing I've noticed is that it's just come like this with the mod in here. Here it is, and it came with no instructions. So I've hopped back online, and looked, the manufacturer has produced a video of them installing it. However, in that video, they're installing it on an Atari 2600 Junior. So for simplicity's sake, and to test it out today, I'm also gonna install it on my Atari 2600 Junior. So the first thing you need to do is open this up and get to the motherboard. I've just removed the board from the Atari, and honestly, it was quite simple to do. The case only has five screws. I just had to be a bit careful, because is a ribbon cable here which can be a bit fiddly the shield was a bit more tricky to do as there was quite a few of these metal tabs that had to be bent back but we got there in the end the board is out and ready to be modded this mod works by being soldered to the back of the TIA chip which generates the video output and first we've got to make sure it's all lined up so I'm going to flip this so the chip is the right way here and just line this up and apparently the way we do this is to make sure the text is all lined up so it's all facing the same way so it is readable and if i flip this over now i can place the mod and the back of the chip and that'll be ready for soldering apologies for the background noise but i now have my extractor fan on so we can get started i'm gonna start soldering in either corner just to make sure that it's flush and secure um, and i have added a bit of flux here as well um, just to make it a bit easier. So that one's done. If I hold that over and push down, that seems to be flush. And I'll do the other side. So sort of there, push that down. That looks all good. So I can solder across. And I'm just soldering in the black, where the black boxes are around. So I don't have to do every single pin. So there's not actually that many pins to solder here but there we go there all done and that is now attached to the board the next step is to connect a cable to the mod and i picked up this cable at the same time as the mod from the same supplier and it has s video output composite output and audio output and bare wires on the other side to make life a bit easier so let's get this connected so first of all i'm going to just prepare the pads by adding a bit of solder to them Now I've prepared the pads with a bit of solder. I also at the same time have prepared my wires with a bit of solder on the end just to make them a bit easier to attach. Um, and I've twisted together my ground wires. Um, so I'll only have to solder them once. In terms of the color coding on these it is quite self-explanatory. Yellow is composite, red and white are audio output and black is obviously ground and I have tested these for continuity with my multimeter. The two that I wasn't quite sure about are the S video wires so I've left these ones to test and I'm going to show you how I do that now. So just to make sure that I am soldering these wires in the correct place I'm going to test for continuity with my multimeter. So I've already checked as I explained these ones and I'm just going to check the S video wires here. I'll pop the pinout diagram on the screen so you can see it but from that we can see that pin four um, corresponds to color and pin three to intensity so if i just check these wires i'll start with the green one and connect it to my multimeter and grab that check it on the uh color first put that on there there we go we have a sound so that connects so we know that green connects to color and just to make sure i'll just check it with the blue one as well so connect that round there we go, that connects to intensity. So we know from that that the green wire here is for colour and blue is for intensity. So now that that's all checked, we can get these wires soldered onto the mod. I 
I've just realized I had made a little mistake. The pinout diagram that I showed and the one that I was looking at was for a female connector, whereas I had a male connector. So the pins are reversed. So instead of what it was, the color should have been the blue wire and the intensity, the green wire. So I have swapped those over. Now I'm done soldering and honestly that was quite fiddly. I had to move the wires around quite a bit to get them in a position where they could be soldered and were in the right place uh, but it's all done and we've got there in the end and one thing else that I did that I forgot to record was there is an option on here between NTSC and PAL and I've just soldered to bridge the PAL as well but that is all done and now all that's left to do is test. I have learned my lesson in the past with reassembling things just to find out that they don't actually work. So I have left this out of the case at the moment. I've carefully turned it over and the cable that I've soldered is connected. I've plugged all of them in to the back of the TV. So now all I need to do is grab a cartridge. So I've gone and found the cartridge of my favourite game, E.T., but I have run into a bit of a problem because you cannot plug this into the board without the case on. It doesn't have the notches at the top to help push it in. But I have a solution because I have my special um, cartridge of E.T. that I can plug in. So I'm going to get that one in there now. And it is very cool. The finger does light up. Um, get that in. That is all in. And now is the moment of truth. We can turn it on and look at the image. Oh, and that's there straight away um, and it works and immediately looking at it, I can say that it does look sharper than the RF output. And I know there is some settings on the mod that can be sort of adjusted to fine tune the image. But to me, that looks pretty good already. So all that's left to do is to get this back in the case. Just a side note before I get this back in the case, but I have tied a knot in the cable here to provide a bit of strain relief. And luckily the case does have a hole here where the cable can pass straight through. Now that that's all back together, I will say that was quite enjoyable to do. I've never modded an Atari before and I did like the fact that this mod was quite simple. I didn't have to remove any components or anything. I just soldered it on and it was ready to go. Definitely let me know in the comments your own experiences of mods and if you have any recommendations of ones I can check out or maybe even try out in the future, even for other systems. And that's all for today. I'll see you next time.